Hello, my friends. Welcome to my craft room. My name's Glenda Mollett, and I am an independent stamping up demonstrator on the west coast of Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada. And I am excited to be stamping with you this evening. It is Thursday Thoughts on Saturday. <laughs> I know it's a bit confusing, but we had um, family visiting on the weekend. Our son and daughter-in-law and grandchildren from Northern British Columbia came down for a visit and they had to leave today. Might have had a, might have had a little sad time after they left, but we had such fun while they were here. It was so exciting to see them again. All those little people, hugs and kisses, I tell you, they're the best thing in the world. So I couldn't go live on Thursday night because we were busy and I was having fun with them. So I thought I'll just flip it to Saturday because they left this late this afternoon and I'll have time for a quick little nap and we'll get stamping tonight. So hopefully said I will have people joining me. I know Saturday night is not usual for me and people are really busy, but I wanted to get it done because I had it scheduled. So let's just flip around and I'm going to be sharing with you how to create. Hi, Janet. I'm going to be sharing with you how to create a pop-up stage card tonight. Um, my Thursday thoughts are usually fun folds or techniques. So this one is no exception to that. So there's the card I created. Oh, who's that Facebook user over there? Hi, Holly. Okay, so there's the card I created. It's gorgeous. It uses the earthen textures bundle the stamp set there and the dies there some of the gorgeous fresh as a daisy designer paper on the front and then i use some of the earthen elegance designer paper on the inside and i'm going to open it for you are you ready for the wow part here we go it's called a pop-up stage fold card ready Ooh, look at that. It's an interactive card. So you open it up. And there we have the inside of the card. It slides. Now, when I was making this, oh, thanks, Janet. When I was making this, I kind of thought, where the heck are you going to write on this? Because there's obviously no area here. And I don't really like writing on the back of my card. So I created a little spot right here at the top. It's on the inside. And that's where I will put my greeting is up there. So I first received one of these cards um, for my birthday from my friend Leanne. And this is the card that she created. And that she used the Zany Zoo bundle which I didn't get, but isn't that sweet? So that's the inspiration for my card. And then I had to create my um, template, of course, because I always like to keep this in my template box so that I have all of the measurements and everything. And the important thing to note about this card, it's cute too, Janet. It is. It really is. I like the Zany Zoo. It's just not something that I wanted to create with yet. But you know what? You never know. It could happen really soon. Because I've been known to be influenced by other other stamp stampers and other cards that I see. So like I was saying, the most important part of this is to make sure that Your card is not going to show, like the bottom isn't going to flip out of there. So that has to be long enough. This has to be down far enough that this part of your mechanism is not going to show. Because Hi, Dimity. Um, because that needs to be attached. So this one, I did it too close to the top of the card, but this one I didn't. So I've made a little note there to make sure that when I cut out the square, it's an inch down from the top. Now, let me at least an inch down. This one I cut at an inch and an eighth. 
from the designer paper and an inch and a quarter. Oops, shoot. I just unplugged my phone and I have to leave it plugged in or I'm going to run out of battery. So it's an inch and a quarter down from the, the fold is where you cut the, the hole in it. And then you use the designer paper piece um, that still attached to the cardstock for the background. And then I've used some of the Earth and Elegance designer paper to create the pots. And down here is the basic border dies to create something that kind of mimics a tablecloth because I thought this would be on a table, right? Hi, Kathy. So we're going to create this card together and hopefully it's going to work out because I have had really busy two days because, <laughs> you know, little people don't sit still. And when they're up, they want to be running. And when they're running, they need to be playing. And Nini, which is what they call me, is the play of choice person. Okay, so there is um, a list of... Oh, forgot to put it once again shoot i forgot to put it in the description of this video in my vip group but i will put it in afterwards and then you can find it if you're watching it on youtube if you're catching the replay on facebook it's up in the description if you're on youtube watching it it's down at the bottom in the description of the video so ah oh, thanks all right who else is there oh hi kathy Yes. Okay, 11 by four and a quarter scored at five and a half. And then designer paper, five and a quarter by four to go on the front. And then there is a mechanism piece and I chose not to do this at a thick basic white. I did it just out of basic white, basic white. Oh, there's Connie. So this piece is three inches by five and three eighths and it's scored at three quarters of an inch then i have a piece of basic white that is four by one and five eighths and that's the piece at the top that i'm going to use for my writing then there is another piece that is um one and three quarters by two and three quarters and i'm going to do the sentiment on that and then die cut it with one of the the stylus shapes dies oh my gosh it's going to be difficult tonight i i apologize in advance people okay need these two pieces and this piece then i have one and a half by three quarters of an inch and that's for the happy birthday on the inside. And Facebook user, Connie, nope, it wasn't scheduled tonight. I just decided that I was going to go live tonight instead of live on Thursday when I had this already scheduled. Okay, so this is two and a half by three and a half, and that's for some die cuts. Then I have two pieces of designer paper. This is Earth and Elegance. One and one and a quarter. They're both one and a quarter. One is three and a half inches. This one's three and a half. No. One is three and a half inches as one is three and a quarter inches. And those are to cut the pots out that are on the inside. And the the small one is also or the tall one is also going to have the the handles so that's why it's taller then a have a piece of distressed gold that is three by three and that is going to be here for the the frame holy aunt jemima and i can see already i forgot a piece then i'm going to use the piece that cuts out of the center i'm going to use it to do those die cuts and i did not do this one so i'm going to have to cut another piece of distressed gold and that one is going to be four and a quarter by 
four and a quarter by one and a half. So let me write that down. And I'm sorry, I missed that one. Four and a quarter by one and a half. If you're doing, if you're doing, if you're decorating your card like my card is, but you probably are not because you may not have the stuff I'm using. Okay, copper clay. I have. I have, I don't know where it is. That's the piece that goes in the center. So this one is three by four and five eighths. It's going to be for the piece on the inside. And then I have a piece that is one and seven eighths by four and a quarter to go on the bottom here. And that's going to make the stage. And I'm just noticing that I don't have any for this die cut. And did I write it down? That's interesting. I don't have any for that die cut. I'll have to go get some out. That's what I'm just looking to make sure. Oh, and then there's these, these die cuts. So I guess what I did was... Did I write down three by four and five eighths times two pieces? I don't remember if I did. And if I didn't, I do apologize. I forgot to cut them. So I'm going to have to cut another one of these and put adhesive sheet on the bottom so that I can die cut these. Okay. I can tell already that this is going to be, this is going to be quite the night. <laughs> Oh, I did. Oh, good. Oh, good. Whew. Thanks, Kathy and Dimity. I'm glad. All right. And then there is um, these four pieces. Now, these are, these are not on my list. So these are half an inch by one and a half inches. So what they are, I'm going to try and show you. Can you see in here, in between the card base and the, the stage part, there is a couple of layers of cardstock. Oh, I know what it is. This is the thick one, and I did write this down. One and a half by one half times four pieces. And we're going to stack those, make two of them, and that holds... That holds the, the stage away from the base enough that this is easily in and out. Okay, so I am going to go and get my distressed gold and my copper clay. And copper clay. And I'll get those pieces. So if you have not cut out these pieces this will give you the chance to catch up and i'm going to show you tonight a sneak peek of an amazingly gorgeously super cute stamp set punch and designer paper from the new catalog so you're gonna have to stay tuned for that okay three by four and five eighths i am cutting three Five, four, and five, eight. There we go. Okay, now we're going to put on the bottom of that a strip of um, adhesive sheet, wide enough that I can die cut those things. Now, if, you, if you're not decorating yours like mine, then you don't need this piece because this is for those those decorations only. Now, is that going to give me enough? No, it has to go this way. Oh, well, we'll just put two of them on there. So the kids left um, about, I guess it was 2.30ish this afternoon because they were afraid 
they were calling for gale force winds and the construction area on the road that they needed to take to get out of town um, closes down if it gets super windy because they're afraid of falling debris, which is completely understandable. Like you don't want to have people driving on this road and workers on the road when it's super windy and the cranes are being buffeted by the, the wind and stuff can come off the, the hillside. So they left early so that they could get on the other side before that wind started. And then we didn't have wind. <laughs> okay. Four and a quarter by one and a half. So, um, it was kind of like a moot point of them leaving early, but at least they got over to the other side because they're taking that super early ferry that we took. Okay, that's right. I have to cut that down. They're taking the like 6.15 ferry in the morning. I'm just cutting this down to one and a half. And with little kids, they wanted to be like an hour and 15 minutes closer to the ferry so they didn't have to get up at like three o'clock in the morning. Okay, I've got all the pieces now. So let's start. Um, is anybody out there crafting along with me? Um, or am I doing this and you'll be doing it later? What is happening? First step is to put your designer paper onto your card front. And because I'm going to be using the piece I cut out of the middle as the background, I'm going to make sure I put adhesive down the center as well so that those two pieces hold together after you die cut it because it's going to be coming out in between the if you just put adhesive around, if you just put adhesive around the outside, when you cut the center out, it's going to fall apart. So make sure you put adhesive through the middle as well. Okay, Janet's doing it later. Kathy is watching and we'll do it later. Good idea because then you're not putting, you don't have to put up with my errors and screw ups. Oh, Dimity's doing it and needs to get some more gold. Sorry. Okay, so this is going to go on here like that. Okay, so I'm using Earthen Textures stamp set, Circle Saying stamp set. That's where I got the, the happy birthday from. I love the font in this stamp set. I'm gonna finish it off with some festive pearls. The embossing in the background of the piece on the inside is the exposed brick, stylish shapes for the squares and the sentiment, basic border dies for the um, tablecloth edge, earthen texture dies, of course. And we'll just get those out. Oops, there's very cute. That's the one I'm going to give you a sneak peek of, but we're going to have to wait. Okay, I need that for the tablecloth. Then, let's see, that for the outside. So the two largest squares, and then, let's see, which one did I use? Nope. This one must be the one I used. The largest one of these for the sentiment. Okay. So I'm going to, first of all, set my squares up because I like, setting them up and holding them together with pieces of post-it tape so that I can move it around and don't have to worry about it not remaining straight. So one at the top and one at the bottom just to hold it together. Okay, but apparently it's not straight. Let's see that. Put that on my grid paper, put that on my grid paper. 
Thank goodness for grid paper. Holy man, do you guys craft on grid paper? Okay, we're just gonna fold that together like that. And then remember, I have to go down a specific amount to match all of the Janet does all the time. Oh, I can't craft without my grid paper. And if I don't have my inches at the bottom, I'm really in trouble. Oh, sorry. I, my camera's kind of gone wonky here. There we go. Oh, somebody says me too, and somebody says not me. Oh, let's see who that is. Kathy says absolutely. Janet says all the time. Connie does not. Kathy does, and Holly does. Yay. Okay, so mine is an inch and a quarter. So I'm measuring an inch and a quarter down to the opening. But I don't want to measure that because then I have to do funky things with my, my what's this thing called? Ruler. Oh, my gosh. Good gosh. So I'm going to measure from the top of the, the frame. And that is an inch down from the top. So I'm going to take this like this. something going on outside my my door maybe hubby's opening the other doors there we go so i measured an inch down from the top of the cardstock and then i'm going to let's just get this lined up so i can get it centered while i'm here i love this ruler this is a quilting ruler and it allows me to see through it so that i can get things lined up straight okay there we go now grab another couple of post-it note pieces and we'll just hold this in place words can be hard especially when we're tired grandmas oh i agree kathy oh my i'm gonna sleep well tonight let me tell you let me tell you it was so much fun and why would i want to why would i want to stop playing with them when they're only here for a short period of time right I didn't get that one didn't get that straight in there so i just played played i can i can sleep after they're gone i don't need to sleep while they're here and the little one maggie slept in the house with us which was amazing because she came in to see me first thing in the morning it was wonderful yeah she bounced up on the bed we had a good time Okay, so now I've got this set up. It's an inch from the edge of this fold to the top of that die cut. And I'm running it through my machine slowly because I'm cutting through the thick basic white cardstock and designer paper at the same time. And when I put it in, I'm going to kind of angle it just a hair so that when my machine hits it, it starts in a corner and i don't get that hard lump okay here we go oh i forgot the i had an issue with my cutting plate see my cutting plate it got a big crack in it the other day it was made the loudest noise okay i'm running it through and i'm going slowly because I want to make sure that I give the machine time to cut through that double cardstock. There we go. Now, before I remove the die, I'm just going to flip it over and make sure that that has cut. And it has. See, it doesn't look like that it has, but it has cut and it will pop right out of there like that. There we go. And because I put adhesive all the way through here, it's not gaping here or here. And when I pull this off, uh-oh. Do you see what I just did? Oh, uh, guys, uh, Dimity, I hope you're behind me. Stop cutting because I messed this up completely. 
Whatever was I thinking? Holy man. So good thing you guys are not creating along with me because what a mess I made of this. So I'm going to have to figure out some way to stick it back together because this was supposed to be only the small, only the small hole, not the frame because the frame is out of gold. Like this piece is gold. And this is supposed to be in here. So now when I cut my gold frame, it's not going to stay there. I might just have to recut everything and start. Oh, oh, Lord, maybe I should have just stayed home. Oh, wait, I am home. <laughs> oh, God. Help. I had too much fun with the grandkids. Oh, good. Dimity says she didn't find her plates. So don't do what I did, Dimity. So you want to. <laughs> you want to put your small, which is the second to the largest um, die cut or square die in here. And that's going to be an inch and a quarter down from the top. So I'm going to fade it. And we're going to just go with the flow and pre and I'm going to pretend when it comes time after I've done this with you guys, then I will, I will redo the front of this card, but I'm not going to take the time now. I'm going to take some scotch tape, good old scotch tape, and we're just going to tape it together. And then after I'm done my videoing, I will just redo the front. So don't do what I did. And I'll show you the right way in a sec here. There we go. Okay. There. So it's not going to show on the front because that gold frame is going to cover that up. I could do that, Janet. Janet says, cover the inside up with designer paper. Oh, I could do that. I could. Okay, so <clears throat> pretend. Okay, where did the inside piece go? Oh, there it is. Ooh. Pretend it's all still together. I haven't done any die cuts. Okay, there we go. We have, we're starting from the beginning. So you take your second to the largest square stitch square die from the those dies stylish shapes dies and you're going to put it one and a quarter inches down from the edge of your your fold so there's the edge of the fold measure down one and a quarter inches and put your die on there like that make sure it's straight and then open it up and run it through your machine and then you have this so there's your front and now i'm going to use this piece for the inside so that's what goes in behind there yeah i'm going to fix it afterwards i'm not going to worry about it there's lots of ways that i could fix it but tonight I'm just going to let it go. Okay, so I'm going to take my um, distressed gold now. This is three by three. And this is where I'm going to use both of them because I want just a frame. So I'm going to put this over top here. And I'm going to line this up like this. Put it together with some pieces of post-it note. Put it on the distressed gold. Run that through the machine. What, what a night this has been. I'm glad you're hanging in there with me. The good thing is that if you're watching the replay, you could have skipped over the past five minutes. And <laughs> everything would have been fine. 
Okay, so we have the inside piece that I'm going to use to do die cut the um, leaves. This piece is going to go on the front and it's going to go over top of here. And other than seeing stitched marks on the outside, which are fine, you're never going to know that I messed up so bad. But I do need to make sure that that has glue on it or I might have to just pull up that designer paper because otherwise it will come off. So if you're if you're doing it the right way, you don't have to do this step. But I didn't I don't want to um, I don't want to have this come up and my gold piece to fall off. So I'm going to put it right down on top of the the white card base that's underneath there. But you don't have to do this. If you do it, if you do the card correctly, you don't have to do that. Okay, so now put some glue on the back of your distressed gold square. Or you could have put um, and now my glue's not coming out. You could have put adhesive sheets on that before you cut it out as well, but that would have interrupted interfered with the die cuts that I'm going to do. So that's why I didn't do it. Let's see if I can get my glue working because apparently it's clogged up. And we're just going to, oops, oops, there the blob came out. It's a good thing I've got lots of time to let this dry because now my Tombow is not playing nice. There we go. I'm just going to put that off to the side and let that dry. All right. Now, this piece, I'm going to cut out one of these. And I'm not worried about um, how long it is because it's going to tuck in behind that big one anyways. And then I'm going to cut one of these. So those are two of the dies from the earthen textures. Earthen textures die. And we'll run that through. Yeah, the feeling I should have taken a nap after the, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I should have done something, all right. Hey, it's all going to work out in the end, right? And only you guys are going to know that I messed up. The person that I send the card to is not going to know. Because by the time they get it, I will have fixed the issue. Okay, so now, so let me get my mat here. I'm gonna add, I'm just gonna add the glue to all this stuff on the way through and I, it's been hot here today and that's what affects the glue running out in great gobs instead of the way it normally does. So I just have to be very gentle when I squeeze it and I'm just running down the center, I don't want, too much of it. I just want it down the center. So there we go. Let's get the lid on there. Hold that in place. There we go. Okay, so that's that. That's the gold. Put that over there out of my way. Now we have the pots. So I have the big pot is going to get cut out of that one. And then the little pot and the lid, the, the lids, the handle part. I'm going to cut those out. out of, so they're both an inch and a quarter wide. And one is three and a half inches long. And that's what I'm doing the little pot and the handles out of. And the other one is three and a quarter inches wide. All right. So there's one pot. There's another pot and handles are stuck on my cutting plate. There's the handles. Okay. That's that. So I don't need to put glue on those. There's that. Now we have this inch and, what did I say this was? Inch and a half by four and a quarter. And that's going to be the um, tablecloth. 
So I'm going to put it, cut it out at the bottom, kind of center it. Have that right die cutting right down there at the bottom. And where are those square dies? I need those pieces of post it. Let's come back here. There. I'll run that through. Get that up. So what did you guys do the past few days? Have you been doing anything exciting? Did you get crafty time in your in your craft room? Our daughter-in-law, Jessie, couldn't stand it anymore. This morning she had to make a card. <laughs> so she she gets full full range of my craft room when she's here. So she whipped up a really cute card with a bird. A bird. Okay, so that's that. Now, this piece that we put the adhesive sheets on the bottom, we're going to die cut this one at the top. So I don't want it to go down past where that adhesive sheet is. And I don't need the, um, I don't need all that stem either because it's all covered up. And then this one, is going to go across here and I need three of them. So just cut, put that right there and I'll cut that out. So I've got just the, the head of that die cut and then I'm gonna cut three of these across there. And they will have a piece of sheet on the back of them to make them easier to attach. There we go. Maybe I should have started with an easy thing when I started the card instead of a hard thing. Oh, well, I'm glad nobody messed up. And I'm hoping if you caught the, if you're catching the replay, I hope you were watching it first. Okay, so we're going to pop this out of the die. So there's one. Get off the little extra pieces out of there. And oh, we're going to do a second one because we need three of these to go all the way across. Oh, somebody was also watching grandkids. Oh, Kathy was watching her grandkids. Connie got a few cards done. And that for letter nesty word, word, oh, you did a letter, yuck. <laughs> Kathy, yeah, I'm on fire now. I know what I'm doing. I woke up. I'm no longer asleep. And of course, the kids are here and I'm, we're, we're doing dinners and I'm spending more time laughing and talking and carrying on with the kids than I am eating my dinner. So I probably wasn't eating properly either, which doesn't help matters at all. Because you need protein to keep the brain firing on all cylinders. And apparently I didn't get enough of that. All right, there, we have three of those cut. Come on, there we go. There's three of those cut rid of that. Like, I always like to take these post-it note pieces off my dies because it lessens the chance of those dies sticking to things and ending up in places where they shouldn't be instead of back where they should be. Okay, let's get rid of this. Okay, so what have we got? We've got the white we have the white to do. So this white is, what size is this? Three by three and a half. Hmm. Where are all the pieces? I don't know what this is for. This is the inside. Oh, I have to emboss this. So let's emboss. 
Kathy made a birthday card for her granddaughter's 18th birthday. Oh, and working on an animal memory game. Oh, that's exciting. Are you making your own game up? Oh, are you stamping it, Kathy? Are you making, a, like, are you stamping all the animals and making the little memory cards? That is cool. Yeah, I played a, a card memory game with Blake when we were up north earlier. When did we go? In July, I think we went. I don't remember. It was July. Yeah, it was July. I found out my memory is not very good. His memory is a lot better than mine. Oops. Okay. Embossed. We're done with that. Um, this, is, this piece is for inside. This piece is for the sentiment. And what is this piece for? Oh, yes. Die cuts. So I'm going to cut one of those and two of those out of this white. That is piece is for. So one of those and two of these out of basic white. Stamping and coloring, that is awesome. Your grandkids are going to love that, Cassie. How special to have a game made by Grandma. Okay, one more of these. I was just sitting here as I'm talking to you guys thinking, so what did we do the past? They were here for 48 hours-ish, right? And I'm thinking, what did we do for 48 hours other than eat? Hmm. We played, a, we were in the park a lot. So I've got that and that and that and that and that. The pots, I've got to stamp the birthday. That's embossed. I have to stamp that piece, which is that piece. Those are cut, those are cut. And stamp the sentiment. Okay. So let me find my inside sentiment piece. It's this little tiny piece of basic white. And I'm going to stamp with memento. And because it's photopolymer, I should not have too much problem stamping it straight. But you know, stranger things. And I'm going to stamp it up towards the top because I want the bottom to tuck. So you don't want to pull the bottom out so that it doesn't get caught. If you have it up too high and come time to put it back in, that's going to get caught. So you want to make sure you could make that piece a lot longer too because you don't see the bottom of it. But I'm just going to stamp right up at the very top of it. And then they, we've got all of this to do at the bot to tuck in at the bottom. And then this piece, I'm going to stamp, you are proof there is good in the world. And I'm going to put it right about there. And that's also in memento. And then I have this die. This is the largest of the this kind of a die from the um, stylus shapes dies. And I'm just going to, let's move it over just a hair so it's not so squishy. I'm going to cut that off to the length that I want it after I cut this because I don't need the whole thing because I'm going to butt it up against the edge here. Which piece did I emboss? No, the one without the tape. The one with the tape, Dimity, is um, I used for the die cutting. It die cut out the big, this big flower and three of these. So these are the part that have, these are the three dies that has the adhesive sheet on the bottom of it. All right. There we got that. Take 
post-it tape off of there so I don't lose them. Okay, let's do some assembly now. Everything is over there. Oh, I haven't stamped the inside the envelope, but that's okay. We can do that later. So that's that and that that still have to be done. All right. So I'm going to take the inside piece. This piece that is down here at the bottom. And we're going to attach. Oh, yeah. It's not long enough. Oh, Blondie. Oh, well. It is what it is, right? So that's number two mess up. So this piece should have been four and a quarter by one and a half. And this turned out to be four by one and a half. So hopefully you will have the correct measurements and do yours right. Because I think I did tell you four and a quarter by one and a half. So it's going to go right at the top of this piece of copper clay that is one and seven eighths by four and a quarter. And then I'm going to take these die cuts that we did. And I'm going to take the adhesive sheet off the back. Get all the little bits out of there. And I'm going to start and put this in the middle. So this is where my grid paper is going to come in handy because I can put this on here like this. And I'm going to just hang on for a sec till I get it centered here. Okay, so it's centered. So I used the numbers at the bottom to center this around this dark line in the center there. And then I'm going to center this right there like that. Now that means it's right in the center of that piece of um, distressed gold. So then the, the next one I put on the side. Ugh. I'm just going to put that right up against that and run it right along the top. And then it'll hang over a bit. And that's okay because I'll cut it off like that. And then we'll put one on the other side. So um, my teammate Carla and I, on Thursday morning, we went around town and looked at a couple of venues for our um, winter creative escape that's happening in October. So October the 20th, we're ha having um, a winter creative escape. And I'm teaming up with two of my team members, um, Shanna, and you may remember Shanna because I've done a couple of um, collaborations with her now, and Carla, who lives local. And we are going to do an all-day retreat. If you live local, we're, I'm, we're doing, Carla and I are doing an in-person one on the 20th of October. And it's going to be um, here in town, if you're in town, you'll, at the um, Chamber of Commerce office. And if you don't live in town, then you'll be able to join us, join me for the virtual one. So Carla is doing her own virtual one. Shanna's doing her own virtual one. And I'm going to do my own. My own. So we're each creating three projects. Carla and I are doing three cards each. Shanna is doing two cards and a box. And then we're going to, during the retreat... We're going to make six of the cards, five of the cards and one box. And then you're going to get the tutorials for the other three projects. So you can do them at home. And it's all going to be based around the Berry Cute stamp set and punch and designer paper. So I'm going to show you those in a sec. Okay, I'm going to build my little shims for the side here. So there's two, there's four pieces that are half an inch by one and a half inches. And I'm just going to layer two of them on top of each other. 
to make two shims. Oops. Let's not have adhesive everywhere. So just take and make two shims like that. So all that is going to do is act as a spacer between the card base and the edge of this. So um, it the stage has room to go up and down. So now put adhesive on the back of one of them. And you want to line it up right at just slightly up and slightly in from the edge. And I'll show you that in a sec. So I don't know whether you can tell. It's like a 32nd of an inch in from this edge and up from the bottom. So that when I put this on top, it's not going to show, but it's going to provide height. Um, a shim for the stage to roll on. So I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. And it's going to go on the other side. Just slightly in and slightly up. I'm having issues. Okay, so we got that. Now, you don't put adhesive on the bottom. So this is not glued down. The only place it's glued down is on top of those shims. So don't put your adhesive on here and here. Put your adhesive on your shims because you don't want it to the adhesive to be longer than the shims are. And this piece of cardstock is longer. So I'll just show you. There's the height of the cardstock compared to the height of the shims. So you put adhesive on those shims. Now we're going to take the cardstock and it's going to line up with the bottom, the bottom of your card base and each side. Like this. And then push it down. And that has provide that makes a little pocket in there so that when I put the, the stage part on, it's going to slide up and down like this. You see? Pretty cool, eh? I just thought of something. I don't think I made my oh well. It'll I'll cover it up. I didn't make my stem long enough. Okay, so there we go. There's that. Now I'm gonna put that. Let's get the I'm gonna put this on because my adhesive is just sitting there exposed and I'm afraid I'm going to I'm going to put it down and it's going to end up getting attached to something. So I'm just framing that hole with my distressed gold frame like that. Okay, put that over to the side. Now, I'm going to take, this is the stage mechanism and this measures three inches by five and three eighths of an inch and it's scored at three quarters. So you want to fold that three quarters of an inch over and give it a good um, burnishing. And then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to burnish it the other way because you want it to lay down flat, but you also want it to be, um, you want it to move well. And then you take this piece of embossed copper clay and I'm going to put it on top of it like that. Now, it may be too long. It may be too short if you didn't cut it right. Don't worry about what's happening at the bottom because that's all covered anyways. So let's use adhesive and get this on there. We didn't even get to go and pick blackberries with the grandchildren other than in our driveway. And we usually do that so that they can take blackberries home, but didn't ha happen this time. We spent a lot of time yesterday in the park. We took them out for, we went and grabbed some lunch and we went down to the park by Harbor Key right along the water and they played and played and played and played. And then we walked and then we played and played and played and played. Oh, we had so much fun. Okay, so I've attached that embossed piece to the mechanism. Now, we're going to take the mechanism, this part, and put my 
adhesive on that. Like that. And this is where that measurement here is really important. Because you don't want this to be down too far and you don't want it to be up too far. You want it to so that, let me see if I can show you how much is in there. Okay, so you can see where the, the sentiment is. So see, I didn't cut that paper long enough, but you can't even tell when it's together. So you want, it's going to have, what is that? About a quarter of an inch, I guess that is sliding down inside. So just, as long as you have it so that it doesn't completely pop out, you're good to go. So I've got my adhesive on here and I'm going to attach the, the mechanism, the part that I put the adhesive on right above where the fold is there. So right here and kind of center it. So I'm going to put it in here like this, but I'm kind of keeping an eye so that it, this is centered. Sort of. And because I put it down, I cut this down far enough, I've got lots to work with. But when I did my original um, template, I didn't have a lot to work with because that is right up against that fold. So just make sure that you have um this is down far enough so that was an inch and a quarter okay so i put that on there and now i can tell see how nice that's going to roll in there when i put this in it's going to go up and down perfectly and because i didn't put any adhesive down here I don't have to worry about it being too long and if it when it's closed if it pokes out just cut it off a little bit uh oh somebody forgot all about that who was that oh Valerie you missed you missed well you missed all the screw-ups just telling you if and I'll mention this again. If you're watching this and you're going to watch the replay, make sure you watch all the errors at the beginning at where I cut the hole in the front and skip right to the part where I showed you what it was really supposed to look like because it's quite a mess on the inside, but we're not, we're not going there. We're pretending that I didn't mess up. Okay, so now we're going to decorate this. And because it slips in and out really easily, I don't have to worry about it. The one thing you do have to worry about, though, is getting this in the right spot. So close your card, put your adhesive on this piece, and this is, the white is still attached. I didn't try to take it apart. And then I'm just going to slide this in here like this, back in the hole, and push it down as I open it up. And then that is exactly where it needs to be so that when this is closed, you get, wow, I was lucky I even got it the right way in here. <laughs> if you have a pattern to your paper, make sure you line this up properly before, like this, before you put that on. But I didn't have to worry about it with this one. And I am managed to actually get it in the right spot. I'm so impressed. Something went right tonight. Okay, so now... Let's get those gold pieces I put the adhesive on. And we're going to attach them first. And I'm going to, you want to make sure that you don't go outside where the, that square is, because otherwise it's going to interfere with the opening and closing. Valerie says, Hi, Dimity. Yesterday, I rescued a little black cap chickadee. He came in the house, sat with him for about 20 minutes, then he flew away. Oh, that's cool. Wow, Val. Okay, and then this one is going to go up on the other side. And once again, make sure you don't go outside that um, square or you're going to end up with issues when you're opening and closing your card. Okay, now 
this I did. So this um, I'm going to put up on dimensionals on the top and I'm going to put the bottom down flat. But this is that really cool die that you can play with and texturize with all the fold lines if you want to. So don't let me forget to show you that um, very cute stamp set and designer paper that we've chosen for our winter escape in October. Registration is open now and is open until the first 27th of September. I don't remember. Oh, I don't think we've set a date yet. Or I don't think I've done that yet, but it's open now. Okay, so I'm going to put this on next. I'm going to put adhesive on the bottom so that it goes flat. Let's get this back on here like that. And then I'm going to take some mini dimensionals. Ah, yes, doors and no screens lets lots of stuff in. It is a pretty cool stamp set. I must, and I wasn't going to get it. Silly me. And I should have known better because I love, I love leaves. I love browns. I love texture. And this has all of those. Okay. So I put um, dimensionals on all but the bottom leaves and stamp the seal. Stamp and seal down here on the bottom. And I'm going to line up the bottom of this leaf with almost at the bottom of that square. Like that. And we'll put that in there. Now, I'm going to take my Wink of Stella before I cover this up. Because I like to take my Wink of Stella and go along these um, emboss lines just to add some bling to this leaf because I didn't use designer paper or bling paper or anything. It's just straight cardstock. Oops. And I like to add a little bit of, you know, me and Winky. I use a lot of Winky. There we go. Okay. It works well with a dusty rose colored paper. Ooh. Valerie's renos are done and putting a craft room back together. Oh, I bet that's a big job. Holy Aunt Jemima. Okay. So I'm going to pull this out because I cut off the bottom of the, the pots because I didn't want them as long as they are. So this pot is going to go right about there. So let me just put a little bit of adhesive on the top here because I'm going to take one of the white ones, oops, other side, and we're going to attach that like that. See, I've attached that onto there. And then I'm going to put some, okay, so what did you use the, you're talking the Moody Mauve? Who was that that commented that? Oh, Valerie. Are you talking Moody Move? And what did you use the Moody Move for? Okay, so this is going to go down flat. And it's going to go just below um, that square. But over far enough that it's still in that square. Because I don't want it to interfere with the opening and closing of the card. So it's going to go right about there. And then I'm going to cut off what I don't need at the bottom. There we go. Oh, I should have put adhesive on there. Oh, well, it'll do. Okay, so now I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put adhesive. Why? Every time I put my, uh-oh, now I'm out of stamp and seal. Oh. I'm just using a piece of tape that I've got sitting here. I'm going to put the, the handles on. And I like them on the back. You can put them on the back, back or the front. It doesn't matter. Either one works. I've got to get a stamp and seal. Hang on.
Um, Moody Mauve, Valerie's gone to look at what color it is. Moody Mauve is um, the new in color that came out this year and it's really pretty. I love it. And it's also part of the Fresh as a Daisy designer paper, which is what the paper on the front is. Okay, now I've got my new stamp and seal. So I'm going to put a little bit along the top. And then we're going to take this and put this on here like that. And it's going to end up, oops, then I forgot to go push it so that it's stuck there. And it's going to go in right about that there like that. But I want to put some, a little bit of glue on this right down the center of it. So it's kind of stays where I put it. And then put stamp and seal down each side here like that. And it's going to go, I'm going to put it right on top of that um, stem there because I didn't get that cut long enough. So there we go. Now I'm going to close this and have a look because I want I want just these to show. I don't want the pot, pots to show because that's part of the surprise when the card opens. There we go. Oh, Rococo Rose. Oh, that was such a pretty color. I agree with you. Okay, so I'm going to cut this excess off now. Oops. Don't need those. And then I still have this one leaf die cut thing to put on there. So I'll just put a little bit of adhesive on there. Like that. And it's going to go here. I don't want it to show. I want it to be a surprise. So it's going to go there like that so that when this is closed, you don't see it. That's part of the surprise when you open it. And then the happy birthday, I'm going to cut this off like that. And I'm going to put the inside, I'm going to slide it into the pocket. <laughs> Let's try not to destroy the card in, in the meantime. Oops. I got glue everywhere and now it's going to stick my card shut. Oh, well. Okay. So this is the sentiment is going to go flat. So I'm just going to put some adhesive at the top of it. And then it's open. So do this while it's open. Then you can slide this down underneath, get it set up like that. And then when it closes, ooh, it worked! Woohoo! Oh, look at that. Oh, I'm so excited, even with all my mess ups. I don't know what I'm going to do here, but I'll probably put some designer paper or something on that. Or I'll just do a whole new card base. In, in reality, I'd probably do that. Okay, so there we are. So let's pop this back under here like that. And close this. Now, I've got this is going to go on dimensionals, but I don't want it quite that long. So I know I want to cut it there. Cut that off. Hopefully straight. There we go. Oh, should have left one longer. Oh, well life right it's not life threatening so tomorrow have a a date with one of the local grandchildren he wants to go swimming tomorrow so i told him i would take him swimming oh thank you whoever is making that comment i have to hop over to facebook to see Oh, hi, Lena. Thanks so much for your kind comment about my card. I do appreciate it. Okay, so this is going to go here like that, hopefully straight. And there's the inside. Okay, I'm so excited it worked. You know, it's always, 
a guessing game whether the card is going to work or not. Okay, so I need a stamping paper. And I'm going to stamp in copper clay because this is um, copper clay is the color of the brown that I'm using. And <laughs> what did I do with the stamp? Oh, oh, I know. I was I could decided I'm going to put a pot. I put um, on the original one. I used one of the one of the leaf stamps, but I want to do pot on the inside in the envelope. Why not? Right. I'll just do it, the part of it, like that. Hmm. I don't know whether I like that or not. Oh, well. It is what it is. Aw, oh, thanks. Hey, we're real tonight. This is Getting Real with Glenda Mollett. It is what it is. Sometimes you mess up and sometimes you'll learn how to fix your mistakes. Oh, hello, Marlene. Thank you for your kind comment about my messed up card. Okay, so this is going on the inside. And it's going to go right here. Oops, I'm going to go over a little bit. Oh, wait, the pot's upside down. <laughs> oh, thanks, Rosemary, and hello. Yeah, no, it was messed up. At the beginning, I really messed up the die cutting. You know, I'm not liking that pot there, but that's okay because I'm going to be changing this card base anyways to fix that mistake. So I will probably end up putting a leaf back in there again. I do like the leaves. What? So you tell me, which do you like better? Do you like the pot or do you like the leaves? Which one? There's the inside. And there's the envelope. Tell me which one you would rather have on that card if you were to receive that card. And in the meanwhile, I'm going to pull out some gold festive pearls. Now, I've got a class coming up that these are included in the... It's the Trucking Along class. Oh, Registration is now open, open for trucking along as well as um, the first Christmas card class of the year using, using horse and sleigh. Oh my gosh, that was painful. So those are those two are open for registration now, and the trucking along class comes with a package of festive pearls. If you get the kits, the kits plus, let me read this here. Kits plus the festive pearls is twenty five dollars. The stamp set, which is available now, plus the festive pearls is fifty five, and you don't need the punch to do the class. You, uh, as long as you don't mind a bit of fussy cutting out the outside of the truck, so it's really not hard. And then the bundle is plus the kits plus the festive pearls is seventy five. And when the punch comes in in October, I will honor the bundle price for that for you. And the tutorial is fifteen dollars. Oh, Jimmy says she's still. Die cutting, it helps if you take the die cut out before you cut your second or third piece. <laughs> oh, Dimity, I'm glad it's not just me having issues. Okay, so let's go back up here. Till... Rosemary likes the pot. Janet likes the leaves. 
um, Facebook user likes the leaves. Facebook user likes the leaves. Facebook user likes the leaves. Dimity likes the leaves. Facebook user likes the leaves. Kathy likes the leaves, Facebook user. So apparently I screwed up on that one, but that's okay. Because like I said, I'm re I'm changing it anyways. The whole base has to be redone and I will put I will put the leaves on. This one, you know, we could we could fix that. We could add the leaf to it. All I need is a post-it note. A post-it note. Put the post-it note on here like this. Put a post-it note on. Get the leaf. Get a block. Stick a leaf in the pot. Uh-huh. I just read that. Yes. Um, the the truck punch sold out quite quickly. So, but it's coming back in the middle of October. So it, it will be available again. And I will honor the bundle price when it does come in. If you want to sign up for my class and get the, um, the bundle plus option. There you go. See? Now I've got I've got leaves in my pot. They're not exactly centered, but they're there. This I don't think I'm going to be able to do that on this one because hmm maybe 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 not. I don't know. Let's just put that put that there. Get another one. Get another one. Does anybody else use as many post-it notes as I do? There. And we'll just put a part of one in there. Oops. Wait. I need to mask that off. And... I should have gotten shares in the post-it note company when I started making cards. Because I think I have every size they've ever made in my craft room. Okay, here we go. We're going to put this. We're going to put this. Remember that if this doesn't work out, I'm changing it anyways. <laughs> hey, that just looks funny now. <laughs> uh, it's got leaves in it. This one looks much better. This not so much, but I'll change it. And you'll never know. Winky makes it all better. Yeah. So there we are. There's our card. Yeah, <laughs> I go to Costco and get mine, Dimity, and buy it in the bulk packs. Yep, I got everything from the little teeny tiny ones right up to like full page size because you never know when you're going to need it. All right. Well, there we go. That didn't turn out too bad. Looks pretty good from the front end. And it works, which is the important part. So there's the stage part. It's a pop up stage fancy fold. Thank you. All right, now let me get the the paper. I want to show. You. I want to show you two things, two papers, and the stamp set. Aw, oh, thanks, Rosemary, and you're very welcome. Thanks, Janet. Okay, very cute is very cute. Let me tell you. How adorable are those polar bears? And it's got a tree. And it's got a scarf. And snowflakes. And presents. And dots. 
and more snowflakes and more presents and a Merry Christmas and the Merry Christmas you can cut because look at it. So I'm going to be able to hack that in half so that I can have a long Merry Christmas when I want and I can have a Merry and Christmas when I don't want it long. It's perfect. Christmas is better together. I agree. So there's a punch. This punch. This is the polar bear punch. I'm trying to do it so that you don't get my fan because I got my fan on so you can see my fan. I hope that didn't give anybody a, a seizure. So there's the polar bear punch and it matches this polar bear image, but it also matches some of the images in the designer paper. So first of all, I want to show you the polar bear designer paper. It's called Berry Christmas designer paper and talk about uber cute. All right, I have to move stamps because I don't want to get ink all over my designer paper. Okay, look at this. Look at this cute, cute, cute paper. Isn't that adorable? With the fan going, it made the bear quite funky. I bet it did. Okay, so here's the punch. And you can tell which images it'll punch out because of the, you see the, the foot is up in the air like that. So it will cut out this one. And it will cut out this one with the sweater. And it will cut out this sweater and that sweater and this bear. So there's a few of them on this sheet that the punch will punch out. And then on the other side of that sheet is these type of a patterns, which I'm calling Norwegian patterns because, you know, I was just in Norway. And then there's this one. So this one, it's going to be a little difficult to use on a card, make a fantastic scrapbook page. But there's lots of area up here to get starry skies. And then you'll be able to get a couple of cards anyways, if you do this way. And then it has some gorgeous flakes on the other side. And then there is um, deer, reindeer, and foxes, and seals, and what else? Oh, there's deer and some trees. And then on the other side is more Norwegian patterns. Oh, the other day, yesterday, was it yesterday? Yesterday when we were heading out to the park, we got out beside um, grandpa's truck and there was a mummy and twin baby deers. And Blake and Maggie got to see them up close and personal. It was, they were so excited. All right, so there's some more paper. And we got deckled circle dies that are going to cut these images out perfectly. And then some trees on the other side of this. So this is one of the papers that we're using um, in our creative escape. There's this pattern. And then on the other side, some really funky snowflakes. I love the colors in this paper and there's presents on here. Now don't look at this as how busy it is. Think of this in smaller pieces because when you look at a 12 by 12 like this with all of these colors and all of this pattern happening, it's really, really busy. And sometimes it's not pleasing to the eye, but if you cut it down and you put like use just a piece of it, and have it up against a soothing paper, it works a lot better. But on the other side of it is Norwegian pattern in green. So it's a really versatile package of paper. And we're going to be using that. And I know Carla and Shanna are going to come up with some super cool stuff, projects to do. But I wanted to show you this one other thing. I hope you don't mind. Oh my gosh, it's been an hour and a half. Snowflake Magic specialty paper. Oh, ladies. 
And gentlemen, wait till you see this. It's foiled. So it's got white snowflakes on Lost Lagoon background. Look at this. Now these papers are one-sided and you get two sheets of each one. Then we get white with silver foiling. Two sheets of that. And then there is Lost Lagoon on Lost Lagoon. Isn't that gorgeous? So this is more like um, Pretty Peacock because it's quite dark. But isn't that stunning? Got them all in the day before the kids arrived. Did, and all I did was get to open the package and have a look at it. I haven't even been able to do anything with them yet. But that's okay. I would rather have been doing what I was doing. Okay, so registration is now open for trucking along and um, the horse and sleigh. There is kits plus options, bundles plus options, um, stamp set plus suite plus tutorial, and horse and sleigh is part of the Stamping Creative Co subscription for September. So if you belong to that, or if you're part of my team, you're going to get the tutorials for that for free. The trucking along is not. That's an extra, extra class. Oh, I bet you. Oh, Kathy. Oh, pre-order. Oh, pre-order. You know, I order, I try to hold myself back on the first pre-order and I think, okay, I'll just get what I want. And I planned my classes all out. And then I start seeing all these other cards and it's like a cave. I have to get more stuff. <laughs> so I'll be back on Monday night with the card that I was going to make last Monday night when we were off also having time with our grandchildren. I hope you can join me at eight o'clock Pacific time. And I, um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I'll see you soon in my craft room. Don't forget, if you've got any questions, just let me know. Hit those emojis down there, down there. You know, those emojis to let Facebook know that you are enjoying my video and it sends it out to more people. Thanks, everybody. I had a blast screwing up this card tonight and I will see you soon. Stampin' Smiles. Bye for now.